Hi, so in this episode of Who Is That Guy, we're going to be looking at someone who has effectively been our guide in World of Warcraft for the past two expansions, which is the Archmage Khadgar. Now, where did this guy come from? Well, if you've watched the film, then you might know a little bit of something about him, but the story changed subtly. This guy was involved right from the very start of the Warcraft story in terms of the games. He was a very powerful mage who, at a very young end, was sent by the Kirin Tor to Medea. Medivh. Only unlike in the film, at the time Kadka did not know that Medivh was the guardian of Tirasfall, which is a mage imbued with all the power of the mages of Dalaran to be able to ward off the Burning Legion, but he was sent to apprentice with Medivh. One little pub quiz bit of trivia is that Kadgar is dwarvish for trust, so he is someone whose name means trust. While apprenticed with Medivh in Karazhan, he did eventually not only realise that Medivh was the Guardian, but also start to think that something wasn't quite right. He didn't realise that Medivh was being controlled as such, but he did eventually discover that Medivh was behind the construction of a portal that was intended to connect to another world and allow an invasion of Azeroth. It's also here that he met Garona Harforken and became friends with her. Now, when they discovered that Medivh was responsible for summoning in the orcs, he exposed him and he and Lothar, just like in the film, went to battle Medivh to kill him. They didn't drop a big golem on his head. Instead, in the ensuing battle, Khadgar was cursed to become an old man. So he went from a teenager to an old man with a big white beard, as shown in the Valley of Heroes in his statue. But he eventually stabbed Medivh in the heart and then Lothar chopped his head off. That sort of finished him off until Warcraft 3 at least. Now, eventually, in the lore of the story, not like in the film, Stormwind was overrun by the Orcs, so the Alliance had to flee north to Lordaeron, and Khadgar fled with them, where he became one of the commanders of the Alliance of Lordaeron. Eventually, the Alliance managed to beat back the Orcs right to the Dark Portal, and it was Khadgar himself who was able to disable the portal to prevent more Orcs coming through only he wasn't able to sever the link with Drenor. So instead, what he decided is that there should be a permanent watch placed on the Dark Portal in case anything else came through, and he ordered the construction of the Netherguard Keep in the Blasted Lands so that there could be a permanent garrison watching the Dark Portal for any strange activity. Sure enough... Orcs did start to come through again at the behest of Nezul, who was the shaman who originally was the master of Gul'dan. Our Gul'dan, not the Gul'dan that's appeared in Legion and Wad, who wanted to create more portals to other worlds. But to do this, he needed artifacts, so he was getting Orcs to come through to Azeroth to capture some of these artifacts. Artifacts which included the skull of Gul'dan. Gul'dan, very important here, but I'm going to be talking about him next week. So the Alliance saw this, of course, because of the watch they had on it, and they went into Drenor to recapture some of these artifacts, and then Khadgar used this from the Drenor side to sever that link, to basically break the link between Azeroth and Drenor. At this point, from the point of view of World of Warcraft or the Warcraft game, Khadgar is lost to us. He can't get back to Azeroth. He and a number of other heroes who named themselves the Sons of Lothar after Anduin Lothar, someone they all respected, the commander of the alliance that eventually retook Stormwind. It also included Turalyon, who I covered in the previous episode, as well as Illyria and a couple of others who are no longer of great importance within the World of Warcraft game. Now, when we returned to what we now call Outland, because it's a shattered remains of Drenor, because of the destruction wrought upon it, with Nezul trying to create loads and loads of portals to other worlds, it shattered the world. Khadgar tells us about his time there. Now, in the original TBC, we see Khadgar as we see him in the statue in the Valley of Heroes, the old man with the great white beard. The model has now been updated to the form that he assumed in Wall of the Drenor, which is much more of a George Clooney lookalike. The beard is definitely gone, and he looks like the... He looks like his age would now be. Bear in mind he was a teenager when he was initially cursed to look like an old man. But with the passage of time, several decades have gone by now, he does sort of look like the age he was at. Whether this means he's actually managed to remove the curse and he's now the proper age, or whether it's something else, something cosmetic, 
who knows, that's never been explained. But Khadgar goes on to explain that they realised that they were in danger on Outland from more than just orcs, but from the Burning Legion itself. So in order to seek help, he eventually happens across the Naru Adal and then realise that they need to ally with these guys, the Naru being the most powerful enemies of the Burning Legion. And it's at this point at which we catch up in the Burning Crusade. Now, from that point on, for several years, nothing much happens because Khadgar appears to still be in Outland in Shatrath City. But then Warlords of Drenor comes around and all of a sudden Khadgar comes back to Azeroth. He's also wielding Atish, which is the Great Staff of the Guardian. This was the staff that was owned last by Medivh. At what point Khadgar takes this staff is unknown. It's not the staff that he has, if you sit, look at his statue of the Valley of the Heroes, so it's presumably something he has acquired after coming back to Azeroth and maybe taken in Karazhan before the events of Warlords of Drenor. In Warlords of Drenor, of course, he is dispatched with us. We're supposed to be the Grand Commander of our faction, whether it's Alliance or Horde, on Drenor. But Khadgar is very much the one who is really leading things. You could argue from the Horde's point of view much more of an advisor because he's an Alliance character, but understands that they need to work together. He has no particular enmity for the Horde, despite the fact that it was the Orc war chief that slew his great friend Anduin Lothar. He very much appears to notice that the main enemy to be defeated here is the Burned Legion. So he helps us in Warlords of Drenor both Alliance and Horde, and he's helping us in Legion again. He's wanting to reseal the portal, which is allowing the Burning Legion to come through. And this is the point at which Khadgar's story at the moment has stopped, because this is the point we are in in World of Warcraft, where at the end of Tomb of Sargeras, we defeat the Avatar, the final Avatar of Sargeras, and Khadgar is all for, right, let's reseal the portal now, and then we can end it. The invasion to Azeroth will be ended, and then up steps the Prophet Valen, who goes, no, we're not having this. The portal's staying. We're going through it. I'm going to give Kill Jaden a big kick up the arse. So hopefully that brings you a little bit up to speed with the nature of Khadgar, where he's come from if you've only been playing the game for a few years, haven't really played the Warcraft RTSs. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe for further content. Next week it will be Gul'dan. So until then, I'll see you later.